What's up guys, in this video I'm gonna to talk to you about the best lenses for astrophotography for Sony users. Starting out, I'm gonna talk about full frame lenses and then budget lenses and also APS-C lenses, so kind of stay tuned for that. My favorite lenses, the lenses that I use the most are gonna be like the lightest lenses. I just have a preference for lighter lenses. I don't think they're the best lenses out there, but they're pretty good. And I would say for the majority of my astrophotography work, I would say I use these two lenses and that is the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 which is a really expensive lens it's like 1200 bucks that was my first lens that I used for astrophotography you get a lot of the background rather than just like mainly getting like the Milky Way and a lot of the shots that I've taken um, so I love that lens I love that it's low light the problem with it is that it's a it's a 1.4 and so if you're focusing on the stars sometimes it really kind of can blur the foreground a bit, even with my 1.8. So I may even stop it down a little bit. And I'm, you may be thinking like, this is crazy. One point, the whole purpose of having a 1.4 is to capture more light. And I've kind of found that I actually, I don't think it's the best lens, like that 24 millimeter 1.4. Yeah, it gathers a ton of light, but if you're not, if you're not taking multiple images and then stacking them together in Photoshop, because ideally that's the best way to get like, really good sharpness if you're not doing that you're not going to get a great photo from just taking a single image so that's why i don't think it's the best lens for astrophotography and so i primarily actually shoot on my 20 millimeter 1.8 a 1.8 is perfectly fine i kind of think the best aperture is like an f2 but uh 1.8 is great i shoot with my 20 millimeter all the time that's probably my lens of choice just because it captures so much more of the landscape. Anytime I go backpacking or go backcountry and I do anything with astrophotography, it seems like I'm always taking the 20 millimeter just because it's a slightly lighter and it's gonna capture a wider frame of view. And that's the most important to me because I can always crop later. Now I can, you can do like panos, you can take multiple images, but it just takes more time and it just, I just seem to get like good images with my 20 millimeter and I can always crop and post if I need to. So those two lenses are probably my top favorite, um, mainly just because they're light, they're portable, they're easy to kind of pack with me. If I was doing astrophotography like full time, if I was doing it professionally, if I was, if I just wanted one lens for everything, I would definitely go for the Sigma 14 millimeter to 24 millimeter 2.8 main reason for that is because first of all it's really sharp it's pretty much just as sharp as the 24 millimeter 1.4 and the sony 20 millimeter that i just mentioned but the main reason that i would get this camera is because it has those stars are just pinpoint you don't have any of the star trailing like you do in any other camera sony's not bad like sony's come a long way i would say that the 20 millimeter is actually a little bit better than the 24 millimeter but it's still you can still see the star trailing or the coma it's just they're not perfectly pinpoint but they're pretty darn good and they're good enough for like what i would want um, so i don't really need a better lens but if i was doing this professionally I would get the Sigma 1424 just because like it's this huge wide focal length and then you just get really nice pinpoint stars there's min minimal coma performance there's not that much vignette it's I think the best lens for most people that are interested in astrophotography and so I'll put that in the link in the description below I'll put all these lenses in the link in the description below so if you're interested in those and this is the Sony, I mean, this is the Sony 20 millimeter 1.4. I actually use it on my a6700. It's small, it's lightweight, it fits on here like pretty well. I think it's an excellent lens. I probably would not use it on APS-C because it ends up becoming like a 28 millimeter. I mean, you could still use it and I think it would be perfectly fine. So best lens of all time, Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter. Now for budget options, if you're on a budget, you can get a lens for about 300 bucks. It's an excellent lens. I would say the, the Coma performance is probably around the same as what you're gonna get with any of these Sony lenses. It might be slightly better. It's not gonna be as sharp though. And that is the Samyang 18 millimeter 2.8. It's, I mean, it's pretty close to sharpness. It's not much different. You're not gonna be like noticing that much a difference between this and the 20 millimeter unless you're doing like some pixel peeping. And the 20 millimeter from Sony is actually more like a 19 millimeter. So I would say that these two lenses are kind of neck and neck. 
I just prefer the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 because it's just a little bit faster if I need that extra speed, if I'm using it for vlogging or for anything else. And then it just happens to be a really good lens for astrophotography and so that's why I use it. But the Samyang I think is a really good lens to get too, the 18 millimeter 2.8 only 300 bucks versus like $800 for the 20 millimeter 1.8. Oh, and just so you know, the Sigma is about $1,000. So keep that in mind, it's kind of an expensive lens. Okay, so another budget option around the $300 price range is the Viltrox 24 millimeter 1.4. I think this is an excellent lens. It's made for people that are doing astrophotography. You can just set it to focus on the stars. It's just a lot easier to focus. I wish that I had not bought my Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 and had just gotten this 24 millimeter Viltrox 1.8. Um, I think it's just an excellent lens for astrophotography. It's way cheaper. I mean, the Sony is like three times the price. And even though it's a 1.8, I'm not really concerned about that. I actually prefer that 1.8 over the 1.4. And so Viltrox, I think, is an excellent lens to go. It doesn't have the best coma performance, but it's probably neck and neck with what Sony has to offer, but it's not gonna be as good as the Sigma. Okay, so the last lens I'm gonna mention actually isn't a Sony lens. It's a Canon lens, but I use it on my Sony bodies. And you can buy really cheap um, adapters on Amazon for to convert like a Canon to a Sony lens. The most popular one is like the MC11 adapter it, and it does autofocus, but I actually wouldn't recommend it because it's so expensive. If you're, if you're just doing astrophotography, just buy like a really cheap adapter from Canon. Now the Canon camera that I would be getting, it's actually made by Tamron. It's called the Tamron 17 to 35 2.8 to F4. This lens is, has just as good of coma performance as the Sigma 14 to 24, and it's a lot lighter, but it's gonna be kind of long because you have to put that adapter on it, like the Sony adapter on it, so just be aware of that. It's just gonna kind of stick out a little bit, and you're gonna have to switch it to manual focus. Um, so that's a little bit annoying, but this lens, if you're doing star tracking, it's like the best lens ever because you get such good pinpoint stars. I'm gonna show you an image of what it kind of looks like right now, but for star tracking, does phenomenal. And the reason for that is because you're, you actually step, stop it down to F4. Um, I actually don't like 2.8 on this camera because it has a lot of vignette. Um, so if you are concerned about vignette at all, this is definitely gonna have some issues. If you stop it down to F4, this camera is like perfect for astrophotography work, it is excellent. You're gonna, not gonna see that vignette and you're gonna have nice, clear pinpoint stars. And did I mention it's also a full frame lens, so it's gonna work perfectly on any of your, your Sony full frame camera bodies. All right, let's talk about Sony APS-C. So currently I shoot with the A6700 and my Sony APS-C lenses of choice are gonna start off with being, if I had the money, I would get this lens right now. It's just kind of expensive. The Sony 15 millimeter 1.4. This is an awesome lens for Sony. It's not ultra wide, but I kind of like, I kind of like to be cropped in a little bit more. I kind of like that 20 millimeter focal length and the 15 millimeter is gonna end up being like a 24 millimeter. So I think this is a great lens to get. Um, also the Sony 11 millimeter 1.8. I mean, you're just gonna get really great results with the 1.8. I prefer a 1.8 on Sony APS-C but you can actually get really good results with like an F2 or 2.8, but 1.8 is kind of the sweet spot for me. Those two lenses are probably my favorite by Sony. If you are on a budget, I would get the Samyang 12 millimeter F2. This is gonna be a great lens. Not gonna have as good a coma performance as the 15 millimeter, but it is pretty decent. And then my last lens of choice, if you only had one lens to kind of do it all, that would be the Sigma. 10 millimeter to 18 millimeter. This lens just came out. It's it's a lot newer than the other lenses. I think it's excellent for astrophotography and it's an F 2.8. So it's not going to be as bright as some of those other lenses that I mentioned, but it's going to do the job. Okay. If you are on an extreme budget, you can't afford any of the lenses that I've mentioned so far. I would just check out the Brighton 25 millimeter 1.8. This is for APS-C. You're not going to have, it's not going to be the best focal length because the 25 millimeter ends up being like a 35 millimeter. But if you want to get into astrophotography and just 
take any type of landscape image, I think this is an excellent lens of choice. You're gonna have a little bit more vignette. It's not gonna have perfect comb performance, but it's actually, it's not that bad. Um, and it's like $70. So 70 bucks compared to most of these lenses start at 300 um, for the very cheapest. This is a manual focus lens, so kind of keep that in mind. So my first lens um, with Sony full frame that I ever purchased was the Rokinon. I bought a Rokinon 24 millimeter 1.4. I was so excited for this lens. Um, I remember like getting it from the mail, opening it up and just like using it for manual focus and just like so excited because it was a 1.4. Started taking images with it like immediately like I had so much fun with this lens and then I took it out for, for astrophotography and I was just blown away because this is my first lens, my first time shooting astrophotography. I was blown away like seeing the Milky Way, but I noticed the coma on this lens just kind of sucked. Like you can really see like the star, stars are like more like globs when they're in focus. So it didn't, it wasn't the sharpest of lens. That was another issue with it. So after having that lens, I was like, I have to have the best sharp lens with a 1.4 and so I immediately like bought the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 and I I rented it first and I just like fell in love with it and then I bought it and I've just had it ever since it's just an incredible lens I just have a lot of good things to say about it but I don't primarily use it now for astrophotography and if you're looking for another budget lens like the Rokinon's a good lens but I think there's some other budget options out there so those are all my top lenses that I mentioned I'm just gonna break it down to you. If I could only have one lens for Sony full frame, it would be the 14 to 24 millimeter. If I only had one lens and I was like professionally doing this for APS-C, I would probably get, I mean, this is kind of hard. I would probably get either the 15 millimeter 1.4, or I would get the Sigma 10 to 18 2.8. I don't know, this is like a really tough decision. I'm. I kind of like the lenses that I have right now. I'm pretty happy with my 20 millimeter 1.8 from Sony. All right, to kind of sum this up, if you can only get one lens for astrophotography and maybe you're shooting on full frame and APS-C, just go with the Sigma 14 to 24. It's a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, I think that's the best lens of all time. If you are shooting on APS-C, you could also use that lens. It's gonna be a lot heavier, but it's still, it's, you're just gonna get like the best image quality, sharpness. So that is gonna be like my top lens for this video. I mean, if you don't want that lens because it's too heavy, I would just get like a cheaper lens like the Samyang 12 millimeter F2. I think that's gonna be a great lens for you as well. But for most people, if you you can get the 14 to 24 2.8 you're not going to be disappointed it's going to be a great lens for full frame for APS-C and you're going to get the best of the best quality for astrophotography and if that's what you're focused on if you want to just do astrophotography full time and you want an incredible lens the Sigma is the one to get all right guys right now I'm like in the 700 for followers right now so if you can follow that would be greatly appreciated and if you are interested in, phot in photography or astrophotography definitely follow for more thanks